I had a family of 13. Oh, my goodness. mother had five, her first family were five um, colorals, and then I was the mountain lions. So my, we were my mother's second kids. Uh -huh. So, and I came up here and I graduated. I had my, I had a boyfriend up here, and we had a little girl, and she's big now. And, and my, this is my second husband. So I, my boyfriend, I met at Inner Mountain. We had a girl, and so see, that's my experience. You know, and I, you know, I had her, but I came back. Yeah. And I finished, and I'm glad I have my diploma. <coughs> my mother, that was one of my mother's and my father's rules was she was to get a diploma and finish school. Oh, so they were very so, strong. Yes. Yeah, yeah, so yes. Yeah. So because happens. nowadays, you know, you don't see very many kids graduating from school now. They just drop out. Yeah. So. Yeah. So. My experience of my school. <laughs> yes. Well, tell me a little bit more about it. Um, you said you, one of the reasons you decided to go was because your parents really wanted you to get an education. Why in or not? Yes. Um, back home on a reservation, um, there was a lot of prejudice going on back there. And I don't know, mostly got, kind of got pushed aside when it came to you know, basketball, baseball, track, all that. Kind of got pushed aside. So. And it was good because when I came up to the school, I was more, you know, I was an athletic. I ran, I played basketball, I played volleyball for the school. Mm -hmm. I swam, you know, and it, I liked it because, you know, I had my own dormitory. I was in a, in a, what do you call it, the dormitory with, you know, where all the students were doing good in school. The honors? Yes, the honors dorm. dorm. And I went there, and I still see some of them there. So I said, I used to dorm there. You know, and it was it was fun coming back, but it's sad to see the way it is now. You know, I just feel you know it was a school then. I think they should clean it up a little way. You know. Yeah. So tell me again, what years you were there? I was there from uh, 76, 78, and 79. I graduated in 79. I, I couldn't graduate in 77. I had friends that taught me to stay longer, so I did, mm -hmm. and I finished in 79. Mm -hmm. You said you liked the sports, and you played a lot of sports in the other yes, activities you were involved in. I told them, I said, you know, I can't believe, you know, how our track was. I told them, you know, I showed them how it was, where mm -hmm. we ran. I said, we ran from that corner, that class, the building still up. We ran all the way around that whole building, all the way out, but, and back down. Uh, I had a lot of competitions. I had a lot of intertribal girls, Navajo girls. They were good runners, but me, I'm a Ute girl. I'm from Fort Duchesne. I'm a Northern Ute, and I ran, and I ran, and I beat all the girls. Everybody would say, hey, where's she going? You know, hey, where's she at? And I'd be done showering up already. <laughs> you know? Yep, I liked it. That's what I liked about it. I was a runner. We'd run early in the morning get up and run that track and come back down, <laughs> you know. I liked it. It sounds like you did good in school as yes. well. Yes, yes I did. I liked I liked all the teachers. I wish the teachers were here, you know. Some of them will be here. I hope so. Yeah. And I hope some of the dormitory parents were here too. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed them too. Yes, I worked with them to where my dorm was clean all the time. I made the other girls clean up, you know. <laughs> yeah, I helped them do all that. That's why I think a lot about this school because, you know, it's part of my home where I was at. Mm -hmm. You know, I grew up. And, and when I, after I graduated, I went back to school. I, um, I went to, I went to, we at, uh, in Fort Duchenne, we have a head start there. And uh, I taught the little daycare kids, the three-year-olds. <laughs> I quit. I should never quit, but I did. Mm -hmm. And basketball was more important to me then and I thought I should never have done that. But I in the long run, I believe if I wish I knew sooner if the school was gonna be open eighty and eighty four I would have came back up got more training and I would never end up getting married. <laughs> but that's what happened. So yes, my oldest I have my oldest girl, her name is Melinda Thomas and her father is Jerry Thomas. We met up here at school, and I had her, and I came back up. I had her, and I came back up to school up here. And that's what I liked about it, too, was you could bring your kids to school. Oh, so you brought her yes. up. Uh -huh. yeah, but I didn't finish. 
I took her back home, but I came back and I finished. And I was glad, and I wished I brought my diploma. <laughs> I always tell my kids, if I'm deceased, I always tell them, I want them to show my, my diploma. Because you, know, <laughs> you don't see that no more, the eagle with the eye on there. No oh, more. yeah, you still have one. Yes. Mm -hmm. you know, so. I had a lot of friends. A lot of friends. friends. What you guys did. I have a lot of friends. We, my friends, they graduated too. I don't know what they did. I never heard from them after that, you know. That's why I wished, I kind of wish you guys went out, you know, station wide on the invitation. Because I feel then, my friends, they would have came, I would have met, you know, I had a lot of friends. You know, if I'm by your I could just show you all mine. <laughs> but apparently my friend, my cousin had my yearbooks, so I couldn't bring up, but you know, if we stripped through them, I could have showed you every, I could have told you all of them scene. But it's a long time. So were your friends, um, Mostly you, or did you have friends? They're all different tribes? yep, all different tribes. We even I haven't had a big old tall friend. I can't remember his name, but he was from the Miccosukee tribe down in Florida. Wow. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I don't know if you guys know. I can't remember his name, but they used to have a. They used to be a black, real tall black guy. He was a staff. And he used to always chase us around all the time. We had curfew, wait for him to get in. <laughs> and he, I don't know if he's still alive. You know, I would like to see him too. You know, he, do you remember what his name was? I can't remember his name. If I see, see my earbud, would tell you. Well, do you guys know how long it's gonna be? Mm -hmm. Probably about 15 minutes. Yep, and you guys are gonna come in too, say, <laughs> I'd like to show my family too. You know how that far really I've came. Yeah. yeah, that's why I brought some of them, and I brought my granddaughter too. So that's why. Yeah, after that, I went to work. I quit working. I went to basketball. And after I just quit, I thought, and then I found my husband. We got married. I've been married since. I'm a custodian for the Winter River High School. I like it. Mm -hmm. I have, before I used, to, after I went to Head Start, I was a cook for five years at the Head Start. I was cooking for the kids there. I enjoyed it, yes, and so I just quit and went to custodian and now I'm working. And I like it because I like the kids. You know, I talk to them, try to encourage them, you know, go further into school, you know, get a better job than what I got. But you know, it's good, <laughs> you know. Yeah. I work, you know, and that's what I did. I like the school, I like the teachers. I just miss them. I hope some of them come. And you said you were here during the riots. Can you tell us a little bit about that? <laughs> I wish I knew the guys' name further, you know. It was really bad, you know. You I, I can tell you for experience, the campus shop where it was at, okay. we had intertribal, we had tribal, you know, the Navajos. Some of the Apache friends, right in the campus shop, we had the riots going on. I was in one of the riots. I, um, I was one of the you girls that had all those Navajo girls on me. They had me down, I had my hands, they had my hands. You know, I hate to say this on recording, but I had a big old pipe. You know, I was scared. You know, I was small, and I thought, God, you know, these girls are coming after me. And so I just took one. <laughs> you know, and come to find, I broke, cut three girls' head. You know, it was sad. But you know, when they're coming out, a little person, what can you do? You know, they had my hands, they had my legs. Yeah. Only thing I could do was kick, kick. I don't. I bob busted fifteen girls' nose. You know, having them come at me. You know, that's the right I was in and it was scary because I thought you know they had me down and I thought oh man here's these cowboy boots you know all the way through you know kicking up and down I was in that right I can tell you I was glad you know I thought I was gone you know dead you know after all this I felt like I had a shield over me I was I got up nothing happened I was it hurt nothing wow I, I can say that I'm this because it was true. It happened. Do you know what started it? What was? You know, I just they inner tribal. I don't know where how that started, but everybody, you know, we was at the campus shop. We just kept from coming from you know this side, and we were in the middle of the campus shop. You know, all that's going on, and having people just come running at everybody. You know, it's crazy. <laughs> yep, and I think one of our um, vice parent chair boy or so I can't remember his name. But he, he, he had it bad, you know, he just got his head, you know, black jack, those belly jack cops had, he had his head cut open for ways, they had to stitch it up. It was really bad, you know. 
It must have been pretty scary. It was. You know, like I tell you, you know, I felt like I had to shill them. I was scared. I thought, man, they broke my body or something, kicked me up, you know, with these cowboy boots, you know. But I survived it. I can say I made it. So did, when the riot occurred, did people kind of group off into different tribes? Was it the Navajos? To me, it seemed like it was just that, you know, intertribal games, Navajos and some of the Apaches, you know, were we had Apache friends and Navajos, you know, but I don't know what happened, what's, you know, really the whole detail what came down. I have no idea. Did we just see people coming, you know, towards the campus shop and just running towards us, you know? <laughs> I can so, live that life of my experience of school. But we straightened it up and we went back, you know. That's why I thought, you know, they were going to close it down in 79 after I graduated. But apparently they went further for more years after. So after everything calmed down, um, what was it like after that? Everybody just went back to school, you know, just did what they had to do, learned how to get along with the others, you know. And what sort of things did you do to learn to get along with mm -hmm. others? I am just, you know, meeting people more, you know, getting to know them, talk to them how they are, you know. Did the school arrange any sort of talking yeah, together? And I believe they did. Out? I believe they did, but I think they got to the to the main people that was storming all those, you know, like mm -hmm. I said, our vice, you know, Perth boy got hurt. He was one of the main ones, and we don't know, you know, what all built all that up, you know. There was a lot of that going on, and that's why we was told that they were going to close the school down. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's what really scared them and made them kind of start getting along. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. And after it was all over, did you still feel a little bit unsafe, or did you feel safe after? I still felt safe. Like I said, I'm you know that big old tall guy. <laughs> you know, again saying, I don't know. I hope he's here because um, I when I like I said I used to run track around here and. He used to chase us up our dormitory up those stairs. <laughs> he had long legs, you know. <laughs> you know, I'm short, you know, I didn't have long legs, but I still made it up. I beat him. <laughs> yep, I sure liked him. I had fun, you know. I really respected the dormitory ladies too that was there with us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they helped us, you know, realize, you know, what life is about, you know, be nice, you know, they were like our mothers, you know. I really respected them a lot, and that's what kind of helped me grow up more. That's what I did see. you have a, a job on campus, or did no? I did. Uh -uh. No, uh -uh. no. It's just where um, where we come from, we get quite a bit of money, so we just kind of you know stayed on campus. I have a picture. We still play football. <laughs> <laughs> we were football champs. Play pool. It was fun, you know, going into the campus shop. The outgoing of the cell of the fry bread was good. <laughs> yep, it was fun. We had a lot of fun there. I had, like I said, you know, it was. I had four years. It was like four years of my life, and you know, it was like my home. I respected all the staffs. I'm sure if they see me, they probably would say yes. Yeah. And what about the teachers? They were good. I liked the teachers. I really liked them. Did you have a favorite teacher? Mm -hmm. Yes, a, um, oh, I can't think of her name, my home ec teacher. And her last name was Thompson. I can't remember her first name. I hope I see her. You know, I really liked her. <laughs> what did you like about her? I liked a lot. She taught us how to sew, how to cook. She taught us everything. We made little um, little pillows out of the, um, the way you make quilts. With. We made those. She taught us how to make those and how to zip them up. How to make them with a zipper inside of it, where you can take them out and wash them. And do you still use some of this? No. no. Um, <laughs> my mother had gone, and she pretty much kept everything what we made, and they're all gone with her, you know. But yeah. yes. we had a lot of trophies. They all went with her. Yeah. My brother he used to play ball too, and that's where they went. He used to come up here. His name was Jay Malaya. He went back to Union and he played ball for them and he finished there. Yeah. But he came up here too. <laughs> so how many yeah. of your brothers and sisters ended up here? I just had just me and my younger brother. So just, just two of us. Uh -huh. yeah, but he went back home and he finished. And he was a cop and now he's a criminal investigator for the Fish and Wildlife. So he did good. Is he older or younger than you? He's younger than me. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. So what year was he here? 
Um, let's see, I think back in 76. I guess it wasn't right for him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I've heard a lot of people talk about the Peach Days. Did you participate in the Peach Days? Yes. Yes. <laughs> so tell me what that was the like. The first year we came out, you know, we was told not to go out to the fields. But apparently they were so big and nice and juicy, we had to sneak over there. And, and you know, they told us don't because there was a guy out there that's got a rifle. <laughs> but we just, we were lucky to kind of get a couple of them, I guess, you know. <laughs> Because, you know, they're, they're, I don't know how big they were, but they were this big that time. We had to just eat them with our hands, <laughs> nice and juicy, you know. Did you go into town much? Yes, we did. We went to town all the time. What's we went, we went to town. When we, like I said, our home ec teacher would go out and buy our materials out there. Mm -hmm. It was nice. The people that we got our materials with down there, they were nice. I got, I got to know them, but I, I don't think they're around no more, probably. <laughs> I can't believe how big this this town's growing. You know, <laughs> Before, I like everybody was saying up down you know, up on the hill. They said, "Hey, look, there's it." And I thought that's sad. You know, I said, "You know, I said they should just drop it all. You know, all our memories are already gone. You know, sad to see it like that. You know." I said, um, "They should have waited to drop the main where we graduated at. They should have dropped it down." last, you know, when it dropped the other arm doors down. I rode around there last night and it was sad, yeah. you know. <laughs> yep, and um, I guess I feel like the way I feel that my, my mother's, my mother died and we're gonna drop her house. And that's what I feel about my school, you know. I think it would be better if they dropped it down, you know. I think we got enough memories in our yearbooks, you know, pictures of them. I think we can go on those. So when you went into town, was there times when people in town didn't treat you? No, they were pretty nice. All the people, they were nice when we went into town. Mm -hmm. Even went to um, take my driver's ed, my test up to the school. They were nice about it, you know, even my driver's permit. I was glad I got that up here. That, you know, it's really good to have driver's ed here because back home on the reservation, it's really hard to get a driver's ed teacher mm -hmm. to stay down there. So, so see, that was good about that. They had a driver's ed. And that's all we had to do was take our driver's permit and take our test up there and come back. And they were really nice. They were nice people. I guess I, I met the nicer people in town. <laughs> You know, they talked to me, and I talked to them. They knew who I was when I told them who my name was. Mm -hmm. yep. And they said, well, I'll remember you, Lisa. No. So besides the riot, because that sounded like that was a pretty scary time, was there yes, anything was. else that was hard when you were here? No, uh -uh. Mm -hmm. it, it was good. They have a lot of trades, vocational. That was That's the main thing I thought that was good for us. Because, you know, now, back, like I said, in 80, 80 and 84, there was a lot of young kids that graduated with um, college honors. And I see them now back home working in the offices. And that's good. Yep. And uh, I don't know if you guys know Bettina Redfoot. She's one of my friends. She came to school up here, too. And she's working at the uh, adult education. She's a for higher ed. Mm -hmm. She's worked up here. I was hoping she would come. I was trying to get her to come up to you. <laughs> yes. So she got her, her training to do the school. Yes. And what kind of vocational classes did you take? Oh, I, like I said, I took daycare. Uh -huh. I took daycare. I can't remember what else. It was quite a bit. And I got a lot of certificates. I tell my kids, when I go, you get my certificates and you show them. I told them I, I could even went to school, university. I got my letters. I tell them each show them that too, <laughs> you know, that was, you know, something really I progressed in. And you feel proud about it. Yes, I do. You know, you don't see revenue kids do go that far, you know. I was glad my mother kept pushing, you know, my dad and my mom finish, get that diploma, they didn't worry about nothing. And that's true because nowadays you see these kids on the reservation, it's sad because they don't have it, you know, and they have to get paid lower pay. You know, and that's sad. You so know. do you wish there was still an Intermountain School that they could come to? Yes, I think it would. I thought it was good, you know, like 
what my situation, what I went into with my mother and father, you know, I was glad. And I come from a big family of 13. My mother had 13 kids. And we just had a small home. And I was glad I had my own bed, my own bedroom, my own dressers, drawers, you know. I liked that part. So I thought you had enough room and space for yourself. Yes, so. uh -huh. it was good. It, um, it really helped me grow up a whole lot more. I feel that I grew up when I was 25 years old, say, you know, from the school, you know, it really matured me more. And if Intermountain Mountain School was still open when your kids came along, would you have encouraged them to go? Yes, I believe they would come. I believe they really would. Um, my kids, I try to push them, you know, you can only push kids so far, you know. My kids, they never graduated. But I think if they did have a school like this, I believe they would have had the opportunity of coming. You know, like they came here with me today. They wanted to see, you know, what I lived through, what I went through up here. Well, thank you very much. Those are some interesting yes. bits of the school that you told us yes, about. Yes, it was. I like I like the, the athletic part. I like the swimming, the track. I liked all that, you know. And they have it. Yeah. And basketball, I like that too. So. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Do you want me to grab your family so they can have a picture? On yes, I okay. can. <laughs> Did you turn them off? <laughs> oh, do you want it off now? Just for a minute. So you want to introduce each of them for yeah, us? Yes, I can. Oh, yes. cool. okay. <laughs> Is it on? Okay. Hello, I'm Lisa Mountline, and I'd like you to introduce my family. I got married. This is my husband, our little Cyrie. Hello. And my daughter, Maris. This is our baby. She's 10 years old, Maris Cyrich. And this is my granddaughter, Olivia Cyrich. This is my, my second son, Quentin Dale Cyrich. And this is his wife, Felicia Cyrich. This, that's my family, and I am Lisa Mountline. And we still have more. Yes, I have um, Orlando Jr., I have Carly the Cyrich, and I have Juanetta Cyrich. Yes. And Linda Thomas, my mm -hmm. oldest girl. Well, thank, thank you for recording. <laughs>